hit anyone. You guys are gonna f catch it. Hit someone? What? Do you I am going into work, my man. Why are you trying to pull me over as I am going into work? Because you're going 80 and a 45. I am going into work. Okay, where are you going what to work What does it look for? like I am dressed for? I have what no does it look like I am dressed for? My name is Deputy Hilton and they see your driver's license. No. You know, off duty is not going to help you at 134 miles per hour. This one's going to sting. Go ahead and place your hands behind your back for me. Go ahead and relax your legs. Okay. If you place that arrest, where we'll be getting an arrest warrant for you. Imagine the people who are supposed to protect us and make sure everything is fair. Start doing bad things instead. Yes, it's true. Some police officers and government workers get tempted by greed and start doing corrupt things. But in this video, you'll see some examples of good police officers catching the bad ones and making sure they face the consequences. Beginning today's episode, let's delve into the incident involving Felipe Perez, who is a deputy sheriff when he's not on duty. He was caught speeding at a staggering 134 miles per hour on Nevada's highways, and to add to that, his vehicle had no license plate. Trooper Ken Nickerson was the one who dealt with this risky behavior. As Nickerson approached Felipe to address his dangerous driving, here's what he had to say. That's his speed, 134. Henry 62, 14, 10, 6. Fifteen marker nine northbound north of no plates on a black Dodge Charger. Trooper Nickerson, I stopped you for reckless driving. Uh, 134 miles per hour is reckless. Really, sir? What was going down? Was that going that fast? As you witnessed, Nickerson successfully pulled over Felipe's black Dodge Charger. When Nickerson approached the vehicle, Felipe's wife and child were also present. What's even more surprising is that Felipe seemed completely unaware of his speed. You could easily gauge this from his reaction. You know what, sir? I apologize. I'm, I'm an off duty deputy sheriff from LA County. And I'm just in, in a hurry to go get to Vegas because it's an emergency. It's, you know, off duty is not going to help you at 134 miles per hour. This one's going to sting. Here, Felipe attempted to assert his government status by declaring himself as a deputy sheriff of Los Angeles. However, Trooper Nickerson remained unfazed by Felipe's appeal to authority. Understandably, regardless of one's profession, traffic laws apply equally to everyone for the safety of all road users. Trooper Nickerson's commitment to upholding the law without prejudice ensured that Felipe's attempt to evade consequences based on his position was unsuccessful. I need your driver's license. This car's not registered yet. Yeah, it is, sir. Uh, Where's the license plate? Uh, you know what, sir? I, I haven't, uh, I received it, but I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't find someone call it in. Dude, you're off duty. Come on. I know. You got to get the plates on the car. All right, so I need your license, and let me have your temporary tag at least. Sir, uh, I apologize, but... Uh, I'm not looking for gonna, an apology. This, this is going to ruin my career, sir. Well, come on, man. You made that decision, not me. I'll be right back. As we witnessed, Trooper Nickerson promptly requested Felipe's driver's license and inquired about the missing license plate on his vehicle. Nickerson, understandably concerned, questioned Felipe regarding the whereabouts of his license plate. Despite Nickerson's inquiry, Felipe insisted that he had indeed received the license plate but was unable to locate it. This moment highlighted Felipe's evident uneasiness as he struggled to give his explanation, adding to his vulnerability in the situation. It became increasingly apparent that there were discrepancies in Felipe's account, raising further concerns for Trooper Nickerson. When Felipe was asked for his license and temporary tag, he begged because he was worried about losing his job. But Trooper Nickerson didn't care about his excuse. He replied harshly, showing he wasn't sympathetic to Felipe's problem. This shows how important it is to follow traffic rules, no matter who you are. It's about keeping everyone safe on the road and making sure everyone follows the same rules, even if they have a special job. Trooper Nickerson's firm response reminds us that rules apply to everyone equally. 
You made that decision, not me. As Trooper Nickerson returned to his vehicle, he analyzed the situation carefully. your license okay it. so this is just for the speed and the license plate it's out of the good springs justice court telephone number and address is here this date april 10th is a court date court's not mandatory you can okay. take care of it online or through the mail okay. and there's instructions on the back and just to be clear we do give breaks most of the time oh, to yeah. law enforcement but 134 man we got a child in that back seat okay you know what, sir? I apologize, sir, and, and thanks for giving me a break. Okay. Please drive safe. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Fortunately, Trooper Nickerson decided not to pile on more serious charges against Felipe, which could have really messed up his job as a deputy sheriff. This merciful choice spared Felipe from facing the possibility of losing both his driving privileges and his career. Instead, Nickerson opted to issue Felipe a citation for his reckless driving and for the absence of license plates on his vehicle. This lenient approach emphasizes the importance of considering the broader consequences of legal actions and the potential impact they might have on individuals' lives. In this situation, Felipe had a chance to understand that his actions were not okay and to make sure he didn't do them again. Even Trooper Nickerson was shocked to learn that Felipe was driving at 134 miles per hour with his child in the back seat. This moment served as a wake-up call for Felipe to take responsibility for his driving behavior and prioritize safety, especially when his child's well-being was at stake. In summary, the case of off-duty cop Felipe Perez reminds us why it's vital to follow traffic rules no matter who you are. Perez drove way too fast, nearly 134 miles per hour without a license plate on Nevada's highways, putting himself and others in danger. Trooper Ken Nickerson stepped in quickly, showing how important it is for officers to keep roads safe. Nickerson didn't let Perez off the hook easily, teaching us that everyone needs to take responsibility for their actions, no matter their job. Perez's story is a big lesson for all of us about the importance of driving safely. It's a reminder that when we're behind the wheel, we must follow the rules to keep everyone safe. This case shows how enforcing these rules helps protect everyone on the road, ensuring we all stay out of harm's way. Now shifting our focus, let's look at the situation involving Orlando's police officer, Alexander Shoney, who was arrested for speeding at 80 miles per hour in a 45 mile per hour zone. The dash cam recorded Shoney's reckless driving behavior. Let's take a moment to watch the footage captured by the dash cam. Shoney was zooming down the road at an alarming speed, driving his car as if it were a supercharged missile. However, no flashing lights or blaring sirens were indicating an emergency. Recognizing this, the sheriff understood that Shaoni's reckless driving was without justification. With a keen eye for law enforcement, the sheriff's deputy promptly decided to take the matter into his own hands. He chased down Shaoni's vehicle, intending to pull him over and address the blatant violation of traffic laws. Catch up 
The events that unfolded were truly astonishing. As the sheriff's deputy found himself in a high-speed pursuit, racing after Shaoni at speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour just to bring him to a stop. Such a scenario begs the question, why are individuals entrusted with the responsibility and authority of law enforcement if they themselves fail to abide by the laws they enforce? Eventually, the chase came to an end, and Shaoni was successfully pulled over. However, what unfolded next was beyond anyone's expectations. Yeah, 11070. Pull over. You gonna pull over? Please say a command. Pull over. Say a device name like sync Three one thirteen to three thirteen. What? Do you? I am going into work, my man. Why are you trying to pull me over as I'm going? Because you're work? going eighty and a forty five. I am going into work. Okay, where are you going? What does to work it look for? like I am dressed for? I have. What no does it look like I am dressed for? My name is Deputy Hilton, and they see your driver's license. No. Okay. Three one thirteen. Copy at ten fifty. Ten four. I got a city odd. Uh, Orlando PD taking off from a traffic stop. Uh, it's going to be X ray Fox Rod 6207, XF 6207. Refuse to stop. After Shaoni was pulled over by the deputy, a tense argument broke out between them. Shaoni questioned why he was stopped, insisting he was just going to work. However, the deputy pointed out Shaoni's speeding, going 80 miles per hour in a 45 zone. Despite this, Shaoni kept arguing refusing to listen like a stubborn child. Then, when asked for his license, Shawnee flatly refused and drove off. This incident highlights the significance of following rules and cooperating with authorities during traffic stops, ensuring safety on the roads for everyone involved. My name is Deputy Hilton and they see your driver's license. No. Okay. 3113, copy at 1050. It was said that Shawnee, after the incident, faced charges of reckless driving, resisting an officer and fleeing and eluding a law enforcement officer with their lights and sirens activated. According to the OPD, Shaoni was relieved of duty pending the Seminole County Sheriff's criminal investigation and OPD's internal affairs investigation. Shaoni's moves damaged the recognition of law enforcement and made it more difficult for them to keep our roads secure. When the police themselves wrecked the regulation, Humans lose self-assurance in them, and their capacity to do their activity properly is undermined. This event highlights the dangers of speeding and the significance of obeying visitors' legal guidelines. At speed, there are other drivers, pedestrians, and passengers on the road. By going for walks at pace, Officer Shaoni placed now not himself in threat, but others as properly. Ultimately, Officer Shaoni's tale illustrates why it's miles important for every person, which includes law enforcement officials, to follow the regulations and cooperate with the police. By obeying the law and doing the right thing, we will help create a safe and orderly society for all. It is crucial to take into account that nobody is above the regulation, and anyone ought to be held accountable for their movements, regardless of career or function. Hold on to your seat because you won't be prepared for what comes next if you thought the Shaoni case was shocking. Off-duty Apopka police officer Sarah Mooney found herself in legal trouble when she was arrested on a charge of driving under the influence, following an accident involving another vehicle. This case is important because it highlights the importance of responsible behavior, even when off-duty, especially for individuals in positions of authority like law enforcement officers. Such events serve as a reminder of the consequences of impaired driving and the need for everyone to adhere to traffic laws for the safety of all road users. One person that was flagging me down for this accident who's saying she's law enforcement and she doesn't, she appears intoxicated. But as I was driving past, she was up against this, um, this SUV. And the officer, I don't know if she, uh, she could be armed. If you guys are good to go. After the crash took place, the whole situation took a disturbing turn as Sarah aggressively asserted her law enforcement status on the victim. Take a look at this. 
Hey, excuse me? Idiot like, said lock the door, but whatever. No, you're, I mean, you don't expect someone to do it. Right now. Hit my car right now. Don't come at me, ma'am. Nothing. I would ask you. Nothing. I would ask I'm you. I'm a cop. Is that, that's a driver's side? That's right here. Yeah, I'm right here. In the camera. Oh, God. Okay. This for my vehicle. Okay, I'm going to ask you. I just didn't know if she had a freaking gun, and I was yeah, like, no, you're good. freaking out a lot. Hit my car. Ma'am. Sir. Please, sir. Please back away from my vehicle. Sir. I do not want this to escalate. It's escalating. My car's right there. I'm a cop. Tim at me. Hit my car. No, no, I need, I need to, please make away. If you want to get a Did she, right there, did she touch you? Yeah, I mean, she's pushing, pushing me and and that's why I just, I was like, okay, so she did like touch, she did touch you and push you? Yes. Okay. And I'm just like, out at this point, I'm like, please move away from me. Do you have any weapons on you? All right. But there was, he's just being an Oh, okay. I gotcha. <laughs> and I'm fine with like, he literally just hit me right here. Okay. So as far as her giving me a ticket, uh -huh. I'm a law enforcement officer. Okay. So... He literally ran into me as I was coming off, like driving here. He okay. hit me. I feel you. So uh, I, I said I don't believe you. We just have, I mean, you know how it works. We have an independent witness that you don't know, he doesn't know, that says differently. It says they saw you. He's a last word. Okay. Why do you think that? Because he yelled at me the second I got out of my car and okay. went up to him and tried to talk to him. Okay. Are you armed, by the way? Do you have your, no, your gun on your back? Just make sure. Nope. Is there one in your car? Nope. Okay, cool. When the supervisor approached Sarah to inquire about the incident, she vehemently attempted to defend herself, resorting to cursing at the victim. Furthermore, her explanations lacked substance and evidence. Her rude behavior during the exchange speaks volumes about her character. Despite clear video evidence provided by the victim, Sarah attempted to leverage her authority to evade accountability for the incident. This underscores the importance of integrity and professionalism, especially for those in positions of authority, and highlights the need for fair and just accountability in such situations. During the investigation into Sarah's case, her supervisor made a startling discovery. Sarah was also intoxicated. Her statements were unclear, further complicating her situation and increasing the likelihood of her arrest. This additional evidence strengthens the case that she was indeed driving under the influence. So while we've been interacting with you, myself, other officers, the witnesses, they've been able to smell the odor of alcohol on you, just your, your speech, your bloodshot really? eyes, your mannerisms, okay? So we have reason to believe that you might be under the influence of drugs and or alcohol. Okay. okay. So at this point in time, I am conducting a criminal DUI investigation and a sure. battery investigation as well. Sure. Two glasses of wine. Two glasses of wine? Yeah. Okay. Anything else besides that? No. Okay. What kind of wine was it? Cab. Cab? Okay. Yeah. Where did you have those wines at? I asked a question and you're just looking at me, so I'm... I'm just wondering why you're asking me. Like I told you, I explained, I'm conducting a criminal DUI investigation right now. Sure. Okay, so that's why I'm asking these questions. In Winter Park. You don't want to tell me the name of the restaurant or bar you were at? It doesn't matter. I mean, I... matters. I mean, does it not, were you not coming from there? Are you conducting a criminal investigation towards me? Yes. Right now? Yes. Okay. So am I having any point of, I mean, I'm... Is there a question in there? So when he got out of the car, what did you do? I did nothing. Okay, did at any point you put your hands on him and put him, try to push him back in the car or, re nope. or redirect him back towards the car? Nope. No? Nope. Okay, because that's what he's saying. He, he's saying like, he tried getting out of the car. Actually, I'm, I watched the video because he had a video on his cell phone that he got out of the car. Okay, that he got out of the car, and as he's getting out of the car, you redirect, try to redirect him back inside the car. I never touched him. No? No. Nope. Okay. Is there a reason why, you think, reason why he would say differently? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Why did you tell him so many times that you were a cop? you think that was going to make the circumstances any different with him or anything of that nature? I didn't do anything to him. Okay. At all. I'm just wondering because, listen. I didn't do anything to him. Generally, most cops no. that I know, 
we don't shout that we're past it. On a scale of zero to 10, zero being completely sober and 10 being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? Uh, I've not drank. What do you mean? Not five minutes ago, you told me you had two glasses of cab. Uh, uh, cab. So obviously you can have you, to. Can you drink though and still drive and not be under the legal limit? Can be point you, you, under. You can't. Okay, that's not what oh, I asked. Wait. That's not what I asked you though. So, so like one glass. So you said two glasses earlier, and then the original question I asked you was on a scale of zero to ten, zero being completely sober, sure. ten being completely drunk. What do you think you're at? And your response was, I haven't drank. But that contradicts what you said earlier because you have drank today. Sure. So again, on a scale of zero to ten, zero being completely sober, ten being completely drunk. What do you think you're at? Uh, maybe two glasses. Maybe. Okay, so I understand you had two glasses. That's not what I'm asking you. On that scale of zero being completely sober all the way to 10 being completely drunk, what do you think you're at? Again, you're asking me what I'm at, one to 10. Zero to 10, correct. Okay. Okay. So I can be at home and have a glass of wine and be out and have five glasses of wine. It just depends on who you're asking. Right. So, I'm asking what you think your impairment level is, not how many glasses of wine you have drank. I can have a glass of wine right now and get home. Okay. I'll skip that question. It seems like you understand what I'm trying to explain to you. You could clearly tell that she was drunk, stubborn, and unable to seem focused on the investigation. She also denied the behaviors that she executed towards the victim. Once the supervisor completed his investigation, he took further action and arrested Sarah, knowing she was intoxicated and had been driving under the influence. The behavior she exhibited was deemed shocking and abnormal. Okay. Guys, on your back. This point time, we're being placed under arrest for DUI and battery. Battery. <laughs> Do you know how the orange hydro works? Sir, you didn't do it like this, you're gonna get safe book, and you know how that goes. Okay? Sir, we're trying I to didn't do anything, anything to okay. be well, safe you're, book. You're under arrest. The way you're acting is For what? Okay. For what? For DUI and uh, battery. For what? Okay. Be battery on what? On the person you hit. Who? Okay. I didn't hit anyone. I didn't hit anyone. You guys are gonna catch it. Hit someone? Battery? For what? Let me f come at you. Come or battery for what? You're gonna take me down to to Orange County for what? Battery on what? No, we'll do, we'll do we'll do it all on the same page. Don't battery? Yeah. yeah. Why? Cause you have a fight. Cause you have a FTO. Yeah, there's a camera right there. Right there. That that's fine. Okay, I'm sorry, you know. You're gonna you're gonna bug me for battery? I didn't touch anyone okay. at all, and I never hit anyone's car at all. Following the initial incident, Sarah Mooney faced a series of significant charges including battery, driving under the influence, DUI, false imprisonment, and burglary. These charges highlight the severity of her actions and the potential harm caused. It's a reminder that breaking the law can result in serious consequences, underscoring the importance of respecting others and obeying rules to maintain safety and order in society. In conclusion, the case of off-duty Apopka police officer Sarah Mooney reminds us why it's crucial for cops to follow the rules and act professionally. As a police officer, Sarah Mooney was responsible for upholding the law and setting a positive example for others. However, her decision to drive while intoxicated not only endangered herself, but also posed a significant risk to public safety. The consequences of her actions, including causing a collision and engaging in physical violence, underscore the serious repercussions that can arise from disregarding the law. If Sarah had acted like a real professional, things could have turned out much better. Instead, her actions hurt the reputation of the police and made people lose trust in them. Police officers are supposed to be role models and keep everyone safe. By following the rules themselves, they show others how to behave responsibly. This case shows why it's so important for cops to always do the right thing and act like professionals both on and off duty. Do you think these cops deserved what happened to them? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to smash that like button if you found this video interesting. And also don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for staying till the end and see you in the next one.